Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in today. My name is McCade Marshall and this is Word of the Week. Word of the Week is a short video I shoot every single week to share with my readers and viewers, so thank you for tuning in today. At the end of this video, if you enjoy the video, I encourage you to share it with family, friends, and loved ones, and co-workers. And you can also share it on social media by just forwarding the link, and you can email the link or post it to Facebook or Twitter and your social media sites. Uh, at the end of this video, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, you can subscribe at youtube.com and just type in my name. Or you can also go to my website, mccademarshall.com, and subscribe to Word of the Week there. Well, the Word of the Week for this week is finding favor. And in the scriptures, the prophet Isaiah talks about a time when God will, would restore uh, things that have been lost by God's people. Israel had gone through a very hard time, and so Isaiah prophesied into the future about how this coming Christ or this coming Messiah would come and make things right and bring God's favor. And it really applies to you and I because before we knew the Lord, or maybe we don't know the Lord even now, God wants to pour out the year of his favor. And so when Isaiah's prophesying, he's not only prophesying from hundreds of years ago, he's prophesying about today. He's prophesying into your life and then into my life. And in Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 3, Isaiah says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort and bind up the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of God's anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his own glory. And so when we hear what Isaiah just said, there's a lot of different things there. The Lord wants to free us. He's to, pro, Isaiah's talking about us. He's talking about the world. He's talking about everyone. God is bringing a Messiah, which we know now is Jesus. He is bringing a Messiah to set people free from sin, to set people out of bondage, to break people out of lack. And so when we hear these words, I pray it just lifts your spirit that God wants to set you free. He wants to help you in your everyday life. And not only that, it says that you will be a righteous oak. If you've ever seen an oak tree, oak trees are huge. They're immovable. And God wants to make you his righteous oak tree for his own glory. He wants to, to use you to do awesome and glorious things in his kingdom. And so, uh, just as an example, uh, the, the when Isaiah says that this is the year of the Lord's favor, he's talking to you. He's talking to me. God wants to help you in your job. When you go to work every day, God wants to help you in work. In, in school, if you're in school right now or you're in continued education, God wants to help you learn that new language. He wants to help you learn that field of interest that you're studying. He wants to help you grow your knowledge. The Lord's favor is on your life when you go to school. And maybe at home with family or with relationships with your friendships, people that you deal with every day, God wants to give you favor with your friends, with your family members and loved ones to give you better relationships. And, and even when you go to the store, God wants to help you 
find what you're looking for quicker and even give you good deals at the store. That's the Lord's favor, that the Spirit of God leads you as you shop and get things you need and things you're looking for in life. And so th this is what Isaiah is talking about. Every area of life, God wants to set you free and give you God's goodness in return. And when Jesus came to the earth, he even tells us plainly, that Isaiah was talking about himself. Jesus says, hey, this was about me. And in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 21, Jesus, it says, the scripture says, when Jesus came to the village of Nazareth, his, his hometown from his childhood, he went, as usual, to the synagogue of the Sabbath and stood up to read the scriptures. The scroll of Isaiah, which we just read, was handed to him, and he unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written in Isaiah. He, sa he says, Jesus, he says to the congregation, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. He uh, rolled up the scroll, hands it back to the attendant, and sits down. And of course, all the eyes in the synagogue are on Jesus. And they look at him intently, the scripture says. Then he began to speak to them, and he says, The scripture you just heard has been fulfilled this very day. Can you imagine being in that synagogue? Being in that room when Jesus got up and read a scripture that was about himself, he reads those words, the time of the Lord's favor has finally come. And then he turns on and says, by the way, because I read that, I am he, it's fulfilled. And so there's just, there's so much joy and peace and life in that, that we have found favor in God's eyes because Jesus came to the earth and said, you're my child. I came for sinners. I came for people who are imperfect. I came to die for you so that you could be in heaven with me for eternity. And so we have a hope. We have a joy. We have a peace in Jesus that we have the favor of God on our lives. And, and I just want to encourage you that the scripture says in Proverbs 3, 5 through 6, that when you acknowledge God in all your ways, that he makes your paths straight. And the same applies to God's favor. When you acknowledge that you have God's favor on your life, you will begin finding favor in the eyes of people that God causes to see you different. God will cause people to see you differently because you have the anointing, because you have favor on your life, that you are finding favor in the eyes of people. At work, the boss gives you better hours. At school, you get the best teachers and classes. At home, your home is blessed and protect, protected and peaceful and restful. At school, and at the store, you have favor as you shop for things you're looking for. So God's favor is what causes you to stand out. It's not earned. God's favor can't be earned. It's through faith. All you have to do right now is believe that you have the favor of God. Begin thanking him. Say, Lord, thank you that I have your favor. Thank you that your word says that now is the time for your favor. It's not something you can earn. It's the unfair partiality and excessive kindness of God the Father, your creator. Because you are God's child, you have the Lord's favor on your life. And you have the, the spirit of the Lord Jesus, the same Jesus that read the scroll out of Isaiah. The word says that that very spirit that was in him is resting inside of you. The minute you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you inherited that promise that you have the Lord's favor, that you are set free, that, that you have all things in Christ. So I want to encourage you today, if there's anything, any negative thoughts you're battling, or maybe something someone's spoken over you, to just wash those things off of you right now and declare, I have the favor of God on my lives, and I can accomplish every dream and every purpose on my life. And I encourage you to keep your thoughts and your mind 
set on heavenly things, the things that God has put in your heart, the good things of God. The scripture says to meditate on whatever is good, whatever is noble, whatever is right. Think on those things. And so when you set your mind on heavenly things, that's when you'll see in the natural realm, things around you every day. That's when you'll begin to see God move and you'll really see God giving you favor in all sorts of areas of your life. And King Solomon tells us in Proverbs 12, verses 2, good people find favor from the Lord. And so because you're in Christ and you're seeking Him, you're reading the Word, you're trying to do what's right, the Word says, hey, you've obtained the favor of the Lord. So today you can walk with confidence that you have the favor of the Lord on your life. So as you go about this week, just begin to declare, thank you, Lord. Thank the Lord. Say, thank you, Lord, for your favor today. Thank you that I'm getting more done because I have the favor of you, God, on my life. Thank you, Lord, for my favor. Thank you that as for me and my whole house, we will serve the Lord because I have your favor, Father. Thank you at work that you are bringing peace and life and you're uh, just helping business, you're blessing customers, that the favor of God is just, it's rubbing off on every area of your life. Well, I want to pray over you really quick, uh, just over the message. So wherever you are, if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just listen along, uh, I just want to pray over you really quick that you would get this deep in your heart, that you have the favor of God on your life. That as Isaiah 61 says, this is the year of the Lord's favor. All right. Father God, we just come to you right now thanking you for your favor, Lord. And we thank you, Jesus, that you came to the earth and you walked humbly. Though you created all things, everything was created through you and by you and for you. You chose to give up your life so that we could have a better life, so that we could be set free from the prison, spiritually speaking, Father. You came so that we could have a favorable life. Every day, we inherit the favor of God. Every day, we can walk knowing that the favor of God rests on us and that it's in us and that it's pouring out into other people's lives as well. Jesus, you said we can't earn it, it's unfair, it's excessive kindness, and, and that the favor of God, we have it because we've accepted you to come and abide in our hearts. So thank you, Jesus, for the gift of your favor. Thank you that we are finding favor in every single area of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to tell you real quick the first step to walking in God's favor is first accepting the free gift of salvation that comes from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you never asked Jesus to come into your heart and to make you new, uh, this is the time. Jesus said, today is the day of salvation. So if you've never accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, or you don't know where you are with God, the Bible says that when you accept Jesus to come and abide in you, that you are guaranteed uh, to spend eternity with God your Father in heaven, and that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you've never prayed the prayer of salvation, I just want to pray along with you. You can pray after me just this simple prayer. And uh, so, yeah, so if you want to bow your head and close your eyes and just repeat after me, uh, I'd be more than happy to pray with you. Lord Jesus, Thank you for coming to die on the cross for my sins. I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Bible says if you prayed that prayer, that you are a born-again believer, you have been spiritually born again, and that you have the Spirit of Christ abiding in you. You have the favor of God on your life. And the next step is to be water baptized and to get 
join a good Christian Bible-based church and tell someone, tell someone you know that is a Christian or tell a, a pastor or a believer that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and they can help you along in your walk with God and read your Bible every day because the Bible is the Word of God and there's so many great things the Lord has in store for you that can be found in His Word. And last thing, if you've never visited my website, mccademarshall.com, there's a lot of great resources there for you to help you in your faith journey with God. Every three months I write newsletters and you can actually subscribe to receive those newsletters in your mailbox every three months. All you have to do is go to mccademarshall.com and fill out one of the forms on the website and I can mail you those newsletters and I also email those out as well. And I have a lot of different videos, much like this one on the website, that you can watch with different topics and different things that will just help you in your walk with God and help you to grow in spiritual maturity in, in your journey with the Lord. And I am also an, an, a Christian author. I've written a couple of books, and the first book I wrote is called Tasting the Goodness of God. And Tasting the Goodness of God is 31 daily devotionals meant to help you in your everyday life. You read one devotional every day of the month and there's a scripture for the day and then at the end of the, the short message there is a thought for the day. If you like to journal there's questions. You can do it with a small group or just in your own life before you go to work or before you go to bed and it will really help you learn how to spend time with God every single day. So if you don't have Tasting the Goodness of God, I'd be more than happy to ship that to you and even sign it if you'll order that through mccademarshall.com. And then I have a new book out called Breathe, and Breathe is about bringing your God-given dreams to life. And I wrote Breathe because I had a dream several years ago, and in the dream I was lying in water, and the Lord said, hey, McKay, don't give up on your dreams, and I woke up from the dream. And out of that dream, the Lord led me to write Breathe. And Breathe is 25 chapters with different messages, much like this one, filled with scripture, filled with truth that will help you grow deeper in your walk with God. And at the end of each chapter, there's a prayer, so it teaches you how to pray the scriptures over your life and over the life of your loved ones. So it's a great resource as well in your journey with the Lord. So if you don't have Breathe, you can pick that up on the website, and I'd be more than happy to ship that to you as well. Well, in closing, I just want to declare a special blessing over you. I declare God is giving you favor in the eyes of people. You are finding favor in places you may have never thought of. At work, at school, at home, at church, at the store, and in every area of your life. God is causing things to work in your good because you honor Him. There is nothing you cannot accomplish with the Lord because the favor of God is on your life. In Jesus' name. Well, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.